We are so honored that you're here with us for season three. We want to share, connect, and grow the paper flower community with you. Welcome to Paper Talk. Hello, everybody. We are doing something really fun and unique for Over Coffee. This is a little preview for you if you're coming to our Paper X Talk, our final one that is going to be dropping on December 5th. It's going to be all about competition. But we want to talk a little bit about Jesse and Quinn competition. <laughs> when you look at it, we're pretty much, we're, I, I feel like we're equals. Mm-hmm. Jesse and I make amazing paper flowers. I'm going to toot our horns because, of course, Jesse has a book and super amazing. If you guys don't have it, you should get it. <laughs> But I would say Jesse is my cohort. She is part of my community, my intimate community, because you have multiple little pockets of community within our paper flower community. And I would say, Jesse, we meet weekly. We, of course, record our podcast, but we go beyond that. We mm-hmm. have really friendly competition, I would say. We share our pricing. We share our strategy. We help each other build our business even better. I'm always picking Jesse brains like, okay, I have this coming up. How should I make this happen? So any thoughts, Jesse? Yeah. I, I mean, we were talking about this a little bit before as we're planning for the Paper X Talk final lecture on competition, that perhaps the word competition is not necessarily the right word to use or, you know, as artists, it's hard to really say that we have competition, maybe competition in terms of medium, but because we have we all have unique voices. It's really hard to compare, let's say, your work with my work. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like, or you either love it or you hate it. <laughs> yeah. So either someone loves your work yep. or they, they're they kind of iffy about it. They're like, oh, maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. So I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it's more like finding ways to thrive within the competition. Exactly. Like, how do you thrive within? I think that kind of turning it on its head and saying, well, it's not so much I'm competing with Quinn. It's more like how... Do I work with the fact that we make the same similar things? We can make similar mm-hmm. flowers. We use yep. similar mediums. But how do, you know, I, how do I, whether it's I stand out or how do I make myself be a better artist or a strong artist so that I can, quote unquote, compete properly exactly um, with my peers? Really, they are my peers, right? Yeah. Like you're saying, they're like in our in our, our crew, it's our tribe. Exactly. (laughs) It's our community of people. Like, how can you really say it's competition? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Can I give a good example? I just crossed my brain and I was like, this is be a good one to kind of explain in a better term. Look at a plain white t-shirt. And then you look at across all of these different clothing brands. They all have the white shirt. Mm -hmm. You know what? They're able to spin it in such a way that it might depend on the quality of the t-shirt, quality of the crepe paper, what kind of crepe paper you use to create your paper flowers. What color do you color your white t-shirt? That means like, do you put pan pastels? Do you put alcohol uh, markers or inks or watercolor or gouache or whatever? That is your personal spin. And if you look at Jesse Dahlia and Quinn Dahlia, it's going to look completely different because of the techniques that we apply on there. And mm-hmm. the thing is, you guys, as you put your unique spin on your personality into a flower, that's how you create your customer base. That's how you pull in your customer tribe to be able to buy your paper flowers. Yeah. It's all about how do you put your personality inside and mm-hmm. how do you work with the community around you to make you stand out? So it's yeah. all about looking around, talking to people. And I mean, it's the most amazing amazing feeling when you find that connection within your tribe. People like when I found Jesse and Priscilla, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can totally geek out on paper flowers and talk about my tools, which my husband or my family would not (laughs) understand. (laughs) But with Jesse, I could totally say X, Y, Z. And she was like, yes, I completely understand. Or just gives me a new perspective on things. And it's the most wonderful feeling finding your community. And I love our paper talk community, you guys. (laughs) for sure. I mean, even when I think about competition, I don't know. I've never really considered our peers to be competition. I just think like, well, you know, it's, we do the same things, but we mm-hmm. offer so many different variety of paper flower products. Yeah. And like you said, our voices are all different. They're to me, they're distinct. Yes. So it's not really competition if you have distinct, unique voices. It's like I said, it's very personal in terms mm-hmm. of preference. But I think if we do, you know, couch it in the term of competition, it's a great opportunity to consider, well, how do I make it so that I'm you know, that somebody picks me over my competition. And that's what you're talking about. Like, how do you create that that unique voice, Mm -hmm. that unique personality? How do you make it show in your flowers or in the way you present 
your flowers or the way you present your your product. But I also think our community is so unique in that a lot of us will refer our work to other people florists. So that's why I'm kind of struggling with the word competition, you know, <laughs> because yes, but no, right? Yeah. In a way, it's like, well, if I if I don't have time to do this yep. commission or if I, it's not really my thing or mm-hmm. even if it is, I'm thinking, okay, maybe someone else can better serve this customer or this client. I'm going to refer that person to my peers, whether it's Quinn, whether it's someone else who mm-hmm. maybe specializes in that type of, of product. We're, I mean, I've had people refer work to me and I've referred work to other people. So mm-hmm. I think it's, I don't know, like that word competition kind of nags on me. I feel like we're working, yes, within something where yeah, we are kind of bidding for the same customers. And some people, yes, do sell their flowers very, very inexpensively. And it does undercut us. But in the end, it's not competition so much as us growing as a community and kind of developing our own industry mm-hmm. and supporting each other in yeah. ways that kind of turns the idea of competition on its head. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think as I'm listening to you, one thing that kind of pops in my brain a little bit is, you know, the imposter syndrome, you know, especially on Instagram. It's like, oh my God, she's doing this. She's posting that. That's just a small component of the competition to me, I think is you have to accept this is what I'm going to do. I'm only going to post maybe a couple of times. Maybe I don't even do stories because I don't like to put my face out there, but I can put my voice in text underneath my posts. I think the imposter syndrome is real. It's like, oh my God, you look at someone else's work and you're like, oh my God, the (laughs) rose is so beautiful. How am I going to make that happen? Yeah. And you know what? You just have to work on it. You just got to focus on your own particular rose. Mm -hmm. Make it the best that you can. Keep improving upon it. Make tweaks, make changes. If you like someone else and you're like, how do they do that? Oh, she colored it or she bleached it. Try it on your rose. Make that particular, own that technique. Make it your own. Make your voice be heard in that particular technique. Because in all reality, all the techniques are the same. It's just how do you put the spin on it to make it your very own? So yeah, yeah. I, we do have a hard time saying the word competition because in reality, you're competing against yourself mm-hmm. to really yeah. produce the work that echoes your personality, that yeah. echoes who you are, that you can echo to your customer because Jesse customers are not going to be my particular customers. One, it's kind of easy because she lives in Canada and she'll be <laughs> and they're so far away. <laughs> <laughs> but with the internet, everything is a little bit closer, yeah. a little bit more homey. But I mean, if you look at us, you know, Jesse personality is completely different from my personality. And you know what? I own it. I'm, I'm yeah. going to say my age. I'm 46, you guys. <laughs> And the thing is, I feel so comfortable in my skin now that I don't have to worry about, I yes, I still have imposter syndrome, especially when I look at other beautiful work and I'm like, oh my God, can I do that? Yeah. And you know what? Over time, when you get to where I'm at this age, <laughs> you're kind of like, you know what? I can do it. And you put in little steps. I'm going to make this better. I'm going to research more. I'm constantly, both Jesse and I, we read a lot, you guys. We're listening to podcasts. We are always educating ourselves. Ourselves. The learning never stops. So learn from the, your peers, learn from people that are just a few steps higher than you. So that way you can be better and you can push. And you know what? We see, we look, turn around, we look at you guys like, oh my gosh, you're catching me. <laughs> but you know what? I'm so proud of you guys on our Paper Talk Facebook group. Just seeing you guys post your beautiful paper flowers, it makes me so proud to see you guys like, oh my God, I can't believe she's only been doing it like a year. I know. And- <laughs> One thing, okay, I have to do a shout out to my Cozy Box member, Jamie. She has never, ever done a paper flower in her entire life. She brought my mushroom course with Kate as an instructor. And you know what? She made the most incredible mushroom colony I have ever seen. And she's never even done paper flowers before, which is I'm like, oh my God, she could totally (laughs) drop her career and make this a full-time thing. (laughs) It's amazing, you guys. I just love it. I'm so proud of our members and of our students that watch what we do and replicate it and make it their own. Because if you look at people that make Jesse Dahlia, you can tell if the instructional are from Jesse, but you know it's not quite Jesse, but it theirs. 
And I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> it is amazing. I mean, I think the question is always like, how do you, how do, how do you get your voice to shine through your flowers? And it's mm-hmm. not a simple answer because it's such a unique journey for everybody. And that's why we talk about like paper flower journey so much. Mm-hmm. We talk about ours because I, we're still growing, we're still evolving. And yes. I mean, I'm, I'm like always looking for a way to grow more. And sometimes, you know, I'm stuck. Sometimes I feel stuck. It might, you might not know it, but sometimes I feel stuck because I feel like, well, there must be more that I can do. And so like, how do you get that voice through? It's a very personal thing. It's a very personal process. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it might be dropping everything and doing something completely different and then coming back. Or for some other people, it might be, oh, I'm just going to explore using different medium, or I'm just going to explore doing this flower, you know, a differently and making it 20 of them and all of them different. So it's, I think it's a really personal kind of journey in terms of how to get your voice to speak through. And sometimes, to be honest, I think you can't push it. So it's like, you can't be like, you know what? I want my flowers to look, I don't know, to look <laughs> what I think is amazing. I want it to look luxurious. I want it to look a certain way. And you can try really hard, but it's going to be your interpretation of what it means to be luxurious or what you think it looked like to be, I don't know, vintage looking. It's going to shine through you. There's no like yeah. one way of showing that. And I think that's the powerful part. Like, I think the most powerful thing is not fighting it. Don't fight what comes out of your process. Like you make that flower, you don't like it. Okay. Change it, but don't push and like try to make it so that it's not yours. You know, it's like, let your voice come through. If that's how you're always making your flower, make that yours, like own up to it. And nobody has to, nobody says you have to make everything look perfectly realistic or botanically correct. If you struggle with that, own up to that, own it and be like, you know what? I don't like making flowers botanically correct. I like making them abstract. I like making them a little wonky. That's because the more consistent you are with that. And if that's just like, you're doing it, it just yes. comes out and it's, that's you. And exactly. There's nothing, wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that because you know yeah. what? That actually makes you unique. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that there's any... I don't think, I mean, in my head, I'm thinking there's no hierarchy in terms of what's good art and what's bad. Like just because someone can make something really botanically accurate in the center because they're obsessed with it doesn't mean that their work is better than yours when you like to take an abstract approach to it. Because you know what? Maybe that person can't do it abstract because that's not their personality, but you can. Like for them, maybe making the abstract is a challenge. But for you, it's like, it comes, it flows. It comes naturally. It's just the way you are. That's your personality. That's your strength. And I think you have to, sometimes I even tell myself, like you got to embrace that and embrace yes. that that is your voice and that is going to make you stand out from your competition and like it's friendly competition right like mm-hmm. it's oh it's it it the idea of competition pushes you to be more creative pushes yeah. you to kind of break through that comfort zone and find that voice that is yours. Love it, you guys. I'm going through that thought because I've been reading stuff about creativity and I'm exploring it myself in terms of how do I bring my voice out more and what makes my work unique because sometimes you're too into it that you can't step away and be like, hey, what everyone's been able to see. But like in doing that, that speaks to the opportunities of using competition as a way to push yourself Mm -hmm. into spaces that you would not otherwise go because you've never had to come out of your comfort zone, right? Exactly. So yeah, you're seeing all this, all this paper flowers that are really pretty. And to be honest, very frank, having people, you know, make my, let's say my ball dahlias or my cafe au lait or, you know, or whatever flower that is in my book or my online courses, it, does push me to say to myself, well, that person's executed it like amazingly. They've done so well. It looks exactly like mine. <laughs> how the hell do I stand against that? Like, how do I, well, I don't, you don't need me <laughs> in this world. Like, how do I set myself apart when other people can very easily execute my flower, right? That's the reality. So yeah, like that's been pushing me personally mm-hmm. to try to find my own self within this competition in this community. It's a great drive. And to add to this is when you're trying to find your voice, try other techniques, replicate other people. See if it, does that technique call to you? That look, that feeling, does that call to you? And is it part of your personality? That's where you kind of like claim it as yours and you spin it and says, okay, this is mine. I totally vibe with this particular technique or this look and I'm going to run with it and make it my own. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important part to think about when you're finding your own voice in this realm of paper flowers is there's so many different ways to do one things you guys there's no one right way and try it out test it try all these tutorials are out there try
try all the books and see if it if that's what you want to continue vibing in or evolving and changing it and making your own. It's so important. And you guys, as Jesse was talking, I was nodding my head, smiling because everything she says echoes exactly what I'm thinking in my head. It's really important to find your voice and to find who you are and to reconfirm who you are. I think that's really important. And I absolutely think that that will make you stand out from your peers and from your competition. Yep. In a, I mean, in a good way, not meaning like yeah. oh, I'm better than them. I'm just meaning like people can look throughout, you know, everyone's work and be like, hey, I like that because I like that style. I like yep. what that's saying. I like, who, you know, that artist, the artist's voice behind it. I like what they're saying. And it's a personal preference, right? Yep. Like there's always going to be customers that love your work or hate your work, but that is what make your work special. Mm-hmm. You know, you need those haters and you also need those lovers. But yeah. if your work is kind of like, and eh, like nobody really loves it and nobody really hates it, it doesn't say anything. It's going to be hard, I think, to stand out because there's no real incentive for people to really, oh my God, I, I, I need that, you know? Mm-hmm. And like I said, like how you get there, it's, it's a personal process, but yeah. I do really believe in stepping back and being like really yeah. analyzing like your work and looking at it and be like, you know, what mm-hmm. do I love about it? What do I hate about it? And yeah. be consistent about what you love and what you hate and yep. go with what you love. And if you don't know, ask your friend, ask your husband. And so oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> I know. Be like, know. What do you love about my work? Exactly. <laughs> Cause especially when you can't decide and you're like, because as soon as they start talking, you're going to analyze what they're going to be talking about. And you're like, is that true? Yes, no, yeah. maybe. And that's where you kind of figure out like, you know what? <laughs> when I don't believe anything. <laughs> yes. like, Wait a minute. Maybe I do like it. Exactly. Why are you talking my flower? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's so funny. When I talk to my husband about my paper flowers, like he, of course, he says, your flower is the best. And I was like, no, but really? What do you think of this versus this? <laughs> and then you're like, mm, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if I trust you. You're not my ideal customer. Exactly. <laughs> but that's the fun part. It's just getting other people opinion. Don't get yeah. stuck in what you think sometimes, because sometimes mm. you just poke up your head and you kind of look around. People might have some really amazing feedback. So don't be afraid to put your art out there. That's what Instagram is for. Mm -hmm. You know, put it out there. See what people say. People love it, hate it. I mean, it's all the reactions are great because you need all that to build and to make your paper journey special and develop to where you're at. Because as we said, we're still continuing our paper flower journey and we love seeing everyone else share their story. And that's one thing that we'll always continue on this podcast is share paper flower artists journeys because everyone's unique. Their voice is so different and we love sharing everyone's story with you guys. I find it so unique when we talk to other paper florists about their journey. Mm -hmm. It just, not just because sometimes, you know, it speaks to ourselves, but it's just, I mean, at the end of their day, their paper flowers reflect their story, their life, right? Like their story and like how they got there. All of that speaks to how they express themselves in their flower. And it's like those stories are the, are the most interesting. And it's like understanding, oh, like, especially when people are saying, oh, like, why did they use that medium? Maybe because they've always used that medium for something else. Or like they love the color red or something. And that's why it was like the earliest memory. But like those stories are so telling of what makes their art uniquely them. Mm-hmm. And you have to tell that. you Like, so... Lately, when I've been trying to reflect on my own post, like IG post, I haven't been posting anything. I'll tell you why. It's because it takes (laughs) me way too long to sit there and like type something substantial. And I don't have time for that right now. My kids are (laughs) driving me nuts. But part of that process of sitting down and like thinking, really thinking about what story can I tell from my life that is shows what this flower means to me. And it doesn't have, honestly, like I can have a flower and it really, there's no story behind it. Mm -hmm. But when I think deeper into my, what my experiences, what I've done, all of that does in a way relate. And making those connections is the really interesting making those connections. I think it tells you a lot more about yourself mm-hmm. and about why you do what you do, why you love doing, let's say, large installations versus small ones, why you choose certain colors, why you why you like twisting, I don't know, a stem a certain way. I encourage you to try and think about that, kind of work backwards because you can't always explain, oh, this is why I'm doing it. Once you've 
got your flower made? Like, think about what, what processes in your life led you to this point that you were making this peony a certain way, even your choice of flower. And let's say it's somebody commissioned you to make a peony. Why did you choose it to, it to be that color? Why do you choose to make it that size? Why that type? Like, think, really think about it. And often there's more than just, oh, I love it. Or, oh, I think it's beautiful. There's certain ways. And in some of my recent posts, I've talked about like my influence from my family, my family being in you know, the textile industry and in sales and in custom, custom uh, tailoring and how that affected me along the way. And I never really thought too much about it because it's just me, right? Like you think about yourself and you're like, well, that's just me. Like that's, I, you know, those stories have been told many times and, you know, I know my family's history and that's just ingrained in me, but nobody knows about that until you tell them. Mm -hmm. So those stories actually shape you and thus shape your flowers. And I think they're really interesting to share. So I encourage you to do that because it gives the viewer of your flowers or your products or of your art a really unique insight into why you do what you do. And it makes your art so much more interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I've been trying to kind of like review and reanalyze like why I do what I do. And sometimes it requires you to dig pretty deep, Mm -hmm. but it answers a lot of questions for myself personally. It's kind of like a really great way of self-reflection, but also I think it, it's also initiates a lot of discussion from your viewers and people who are reading your posts and your, and, and loving your flowers. They truly get to understand you and it becomes some, the, that necklace you made. It becomes extra special because of that. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's personal. Yeah. Personally, it's a really great way of, you know, processing your creative voice and processing why you do what you do and your whys. But also I think it creates that connection with your viewer and the viewer who's viewing your art, why you do what you do. And that creates even more of a voice. Your voice is louder within that competition because there's meaning behind it, meaning whether they connect with that meaning or not, but there's meaning. Yeah, exactly. All right, you guys, if you want to hear more about competition and our views and thoughts, we're diving even deeper on our Paper X Talk competition that's being aired on December 5th. Make sure you have your tickets. Go to papertalkpodcast.com. You can buy your tickets or if you already have your tickets, make sure you show up on time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to start at 9 a.m. sharp. We'll open the doors a little bit early, but come. We would love to see your face and to hear oh, and questions. If you have yes. questions as well. I mean, we tried very hard to engage in those questions I yep. think pretty well actually yeah. the last few times. Yeah. I know. And I'm thinking we're just know that we're going to run a little bit long because we have in the past two. And so expect to stay for 90 minutes. And it's not just 60 minutes of content, but 90 minutes of valuable content about our final chapter on how we're going to present pricing to you guys. We've gotten such good response and people are loving the information we're sharing with them. Mm-hmm. We would love for you to come. Tickets are only $8 and you can buy the whole bundle for, for a very last time before December. Fifth for only if you're a member, it's only 15 bucks, and then if you're not, it's 24 dollars for the entire series. If you buy it individually, as you know, when I post one up, the price goes up, and so get it right now while the price are inexpensive and it's totally worth it. It's valued so much bigger than $8, you guys. Yeah. Having four amazing people, Aaron Shrekaford of The Camus Design, Jesslyn Pettigrove of Mossy Gate Farms, of course, Jesse Chu of Craft to Bloom, and me, Quinn at Pink and Posey. So come listen and get ready. Bring that pen and notebook because there's yeah. so much notes that you're probably want to get and take. I think it's a fantastic way. It's a fantastic way just to get more ideas, if anything, mm-hmm. you know, and actionable ones too, because well, we, we all come across like what we've talked about. So yeah, I'm excited to see you guys there. If not, I mean, just like hang out, just hang out with us. Exactly. <laughs> Bring your coffee or tea or whatever, or I don't know. Bring your whatever snacks. Drink. <laughs> your snacks and just like chill with us and listen to us chatter on about, you know, what yeah. we think. And exactly. um, if you love our podcast, you'll love what we talk about on our Paper X Talk because they're yeah. even more focused in terms of topic. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. We'll see you guys on the 5th. Bye. If you're looking for a way to support us, please hit subscribe and write us a review. We would appreciate it so much. You can also support us as a patron on patreon.com. Your contribution would help us continue to create great content for you and the paper flower community.